Hi, in this video I'll show you how to solve some inequalities. We'll start with a fairly simple example. So suppose we have 3x plus 4 divided by minus 2 is greater than 1. Now we have a fraction here and the first thing we need to do is to get rid of the denominator and we can do that by multiplying both sides by minus 2. Uh, the thing to remember about inequalities is that if you multiply both sides by a negative number then you have to flip the inequality sign. So our greater than will become a less than and a less than would become a greater than. So if we do that then on the left hand side we get 3x plus 4 is less than 1 times minus 2 is minus 2. Then subtracting 4 from both sides, we get 3x is less than minus 2 minus 4 is minus 6. And then dividing through by 3, we get x is less than minus 6 divided by 3 is minus 2. And that's our answer. Uh, if you're wondering about this rule of um, flipping the sign when multiplying by a negative number, I think it's something very simple. For example, we know that 2 is greater than 1. And if we were to multiply both sides of this inequality by minus 1, then on the left we get minus 2, and on the right we get minus 1. And we know that minus 2 is less than minus 1, so that means we have to flip that sign around to a less than to make this a true statement. And the same thing happens with any other negative number, so if instead we multiply by minus 3, on the left we get minus 6, on the right we get minus 3 and, it, and again we need to flip that sign around to a less than to make that a true statement. So perhaps that helps you understand the logic behind this rule a little more. Uh, we'll try another example now. So we'll take uh, 4 divided by x minus 2 is greater than 1 over 3. Uh, again, we have a fraction, and this time the denominator is x minus 2. So the first thing to say is that we can't let this denominator be 0, uh, which happens when x is 2. So we're only dealing here with x values that are not equal to 2. And, uh, and we'd like to use the same trick as in the first question, which is to multiply both sides of the inequality by x minus 2. Uh, but here we don't know whether x minus 2 is positive or negative. So that means we don't know whether or not to flip the inequality sign. Um, so one way around that is to instead multiply both sides by x minus 2 all squared. And we know that's a positive number, so that means our sign doesn't have to change. If we do that, then on the left we get 4 times x minus 2 greater than 1 over 3 times x minus 2 all squared. And we still have a fraction here of 1 third so uh, and we'd like to get rid of that as well so let's multiply both sides by 3. That gives us on the left 12 times x minus 2 and on the right we have uh, x minus 2 all squared. Next thing to do is to put all the terms on one side of the inequality. So we'll subtract 12 times x minus 2 from both sides. So that gives us 0 is greater than, and we'll take out a common factor of x minus 2 as well here. So from this term, we still have another x minus 2. And from this term, uh, bringing that over the other side uh, gives us a minus 12 there. Now we'll just simplify this second factor a little bit. So we have 0 is greater than x minus 2 times x minus 2 minus 12 is minus 14. Now we have an expression here that's a quadratic polynomial and it has roots at x equals 2 and at x equals 14. And if we were to graph that, uh, we'll just draw some axes here. So we have our x-axis 
and we'll put a Y up here. We get a parabola that would look roughly like this. And it's cutting the x-axis at 2 and also at 14. And we want the values of x such that this expression is less than 0. So that means we want the part of the curve that's below the x-axis, so between 2 and 14. So then we can say that 2 is less than x is less than 14. And that's our answer. Uh, so perhaps we'll try one more question. So this time, suppose we have x is greater than or equal to 6 over x minus 1. Uh, again, here we have a denominator with an x in it. So we'll start by noting that uh, we won't allow x to equal 1. And, and we'll use the same trick as the previous question, which is to multiply both sides by x minus 1 all squared. And that's a positive number, so we will keep our sign the same. And then on the left-hand side, we'll get x times x minus 1 all squared, greater than or equal to 6 times x minus 1. Uh, next step is to gather the terms onto one side of the inequality. So we'll subtract 6 times x minus 1 from both sides and also take out x minus 1 as a common factor. So then from this term we have left over an x times x minus 1 which is x squared minus x and from this term bringing that over to the other side gives us a minus 6 there. And that's greater than or equal to 0. Alright, so we, here we have a linear factor and a quadratic factor. And we need now to factorise this quadratic into two linear factors. So there's a couple of ways we could do that. One is to use the quadratic formula. Um, or else um, we could guess what the, the, the two linear factors are of this. And I think we can do that in this case. So we keep our x minus 1. And our two linear factors will look like something like this, greater than or equal to 0. And we need two numbers here that multiply together to give minus 6, and that add to give minus 1. So I think we need a 3 there, and a 2 there. And one of these signs needs to be positive. I think it's this one. So we get the minus 6, and then we have minus 3 times x plus 2x gives us minus x. OK, so we have a cubic um, polynomial here. And if we were to gra graph this one, with our x-axis here, and uh, we'll put y up there, we know the roots are at 1 and at minus 2 and at 3. So the curve could look something like this. So there we have minus 2, here we have 1, and there we have 3. And we want this expression to be greater than or equal to 0. So we're looking at parts of the curve that are above the x-axis. So that's this range of x values and also this range of x values off to infinity there. Um, so we have values between minus 2 and 1 uh, so we can say that minus 2 is less than or equal to x and remember here that x can't be equal to 1 so he will say that x is less than 1 and then for our second range of values we have all the x values greater than or equal to 3. So we have x greater than or equal to 3 there. And that's our answer to this question. OK, uh, if you have any questions or comments about this, then just leave a comment below. Uh, thanks for watching.